Good evening, teacher. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Okay, remember that we are starting uh, five minutes after the hour. So in this case, we are going to begin with this new session. We are in session number three. Remember that this week we are going to end uh, the sessions on Friday because of the, of the day we skipped in this uh, week. So we are going to work tomorrow too. So we are going to have session number four this Friday. Uh, now we are going to begin with another topic. Uh, we are not going to uh, continue with uh, the topic of the problems. Uh, in this case, we're not uh, going to talk about problems. Uh, today, we are going to talk about some, uh, we can say some grammar structures. So in this case, we are going to have like a kind of long uh, topic because in this case, we are going to talk about passive and present continuous tense. Also, we are going to talk about um, present perfect uh, passive, and we are going to talk about reduction of some words. And in this case, we're going to, to have this kind of long uh, topics, because in this case, we are going to make like a review of the uh, things that we know about these structures, in this case, we are going to have our view of the present continuous, but also we're going to see uh, what are the uses of the present continuous passive. In this case, we are going to focus on passive, and also we are going to uh, talk about the um, the present perfect passive. So in this case, we are going to focus on passive structures and. Uh, how can we use those structures and uh, what is the meaning for those uh, sentences? And also we are going to talk about the, uh, or how to reduce some uh, words, in this case, some auxiliaries. Uh, first, we are going to listen the explanation of the, uh, the way we can reduce those auxiliaries. And then we are going to read some information about that and in that case it's not like we are going to focus um or we are going to have a long explanation about the the action of reducing something because in that case it's something very very deep and in this case we are just going to have like a general information about reduction uh, because we need to know uh, how we are talking about reduction in this case and in that, um, we can say that in this case, uh, we are going to use reduction because we need it to sound more natural when we are talking in English. Um, and you know that they have like a very special way to pronounce the words. And in some cases, we are not like hearing all of the words that we have in a sentence. And they make that kind of complicated because they like to uh, talk very fast and uh, because they are like familiar with, with that uh, situation, like we do that same thing in Spanish, but they make this reduction when they are talking and when they have like a uh, short words and we're going to, to learn why they are using those reduction in that way. We're going to begin in and we are going to um, have the exercises that we were uh, talking about yesterday because we have two different exercises. We have the listening exercise and we have the reading exercise. So we are going to see again the listening exercise. We are going to listen again the audio and we are going to give the answers for those um, situations. Then we're going to read the, the article that we have there and we are going to give also the answers for the reading exercise. Then we are going to um, go to section number two and we're going to 
um, see the intro video for the section and also we are going to listen the audio that uh, is in the intro video because in that case we are going to find like clues of the topics that we are going to develop in the section two because we are going to work in those topics uh, i think we're going to have one for today and in the others for tomorrow so uh, we are not complete but we are going to begin because it's time to begin with this uh, session so we're going to go to the platform and we're going to listen again the audio and we're going to give the answers so in this case we're not going to like spend a lot of time in this section because you listen at the audio yesterday and now we're going to listen the audio again and we are going to have like five minutes to complete two sections, I guess. So we're going to start. So it is not going to work in this, in the platform. We're going to charge the audio because it is like presenting some problems. And this is very normal in this case because uh, they have this kind of problems. But let's see if we can hear the audio outside the platform. Let's see, let's see. Listen to three people talk about their job. Complete the chart. One, Joe. I work in the watch repair center at a large department store. I repair all kinds of watches. But nowadays, most of them are pretty easy to fix because they all run on batteries. The most common problem is they need a new battery. Since that only takes a minute or so to fix, I always have plenty of time to tell my watch jokes, like this one. What time is it when an elephant sits on your watch? Time to buy a new watch. And here's another one. What time is it when the big hand is on the... Two, Louise. I repair luggage, mostly suitcases. I have a little shop at the airport. People spend a lot of money on luggage, and often all it takes is one flight for a suitcase to get damaged. The most typical problem, I guess, is the wheels. I fix the wheels on about 20 suitcases a week. It's not surprising, really, with the way those baggage handlers throw people's luggage around. You'd think they were playing ball, the way they toss the suitcases. Three, Sam. I repair household appliances. The most frequent calls I get are from people who are having trouble with the garbage disposal system in their kitchen sink. Usually, the thing gets jammed because people put too much food into it at one time, or something metal or plastic has fallen down into it. It's usually pretty easy to fix a garbage disposal, but every once in a while, you run into situations that aren't exactly typical. One time, a little girl put her doll down into the disposal. She thought the doll would enjoy the ride. She couldn't get it back out again, and she was afraid to tell her mother. So when the mother went to use the disposal, it made a horrible noise and then died. And so did the doll. Okay. There we have the, uh, the audio program. And in this case, for Joy, that is the first person that we were listening, um, what does this person repair? What does Joy repair? Watches. 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 In that case, 
Yes, watches. In this case, you can write the uh, capital letter or just can write it like this and it is okay. And it's going to be uh, correct. Then, what is the typical problem of the watches? Need a new battery. Ah, good. They need a new battery. Very good. Then we have the second person and it's Luis. What does this person repair? Luggage. Ah, Luggage. good. And what is the typical problem? Uh, the wheels. The wheels. Ah, the wheels, perfect. And the last one, that is Sam. What does this person repair? Household appliances. Ah, household appliances. Household appliances. Good. Let's see. We are going to see if they are correct or not. Let's see. We need to wait for the checking. So we have all of the answers correct. Now we're going to see the other exercise that is the reading exercise 1.12. And this is uh, about trading spaces. And it says, skim the article. What do you think the show is called trading spaces? In this case, we're going to uh, focus on the information that we need for the exercise. Let's see what are the things that we need to find in that article. Number one, the participants of the show get assistance from experts. We need to know it is true or false or they don't give that information. Then in the number two, the projects sometimes take months to complete. Number three, many participants redecorate their homes after the show. Then number four, the people who appear on the show are actors. And number five, reality shows aren't always entire honest and the pits are no longer friends with the neighbors. So let's see. We're going to make it a little bigger because we need to, to read. So in this case, how fast can a home remodeling project be completed? About 48 hours at least. That is the basis of the popular reality TV show called Treading Space. Two sets of neighbors switch homes from two days and redecorate a single room in the neighbor's home. Both teams have the help of a designer, a handyman and a budget and we have the amount of money. But in this case, we don't need that information because we need to know the participants of the show get a system from experts, true or false. And in this case, we have the answer. It is true or false. It is true. It is true because in, in this paragraph, it says, have the help of a designer, a handyman. In that case, it's true. Then we have the second one. The project sometimes take months to complete. We need to read. Um, the sentence in which it, this information is given, in this case, we are going to see. Uh, it says, at the end of the second day, the house reveals the room to the homeowners. Two days, it said here, two days. So in the second sentence, the project sometimes take months to complete, true or false? False. False. False, in this case, it is false. Then it says, many participants redecorate their homes after the show. We need to know if the participants in number three redecorate their homes after the show. So it says, who usually say, wow, that's great. Sometimes, however, they get upset. Is this reality TV realistic? Up to a point, the designers actually get videotapes of the room and plan out every step beforehand. 
even the materials are purchased in advance. It is the same at home, one designer say. If you don't want a project to last for months, you need a game plan. Everybody thinks trading spaces is totally real, but trading spaces is totally not real. So in the case of number three, many participants redecorate their homes after the show. It is true, false, or they don't give that information. Not given. Not given, good. In the sentence said that they are like upset sometimes because they don't like the, the changes, but in the paragraph uh, didn't say that they uh, redecorate their homes. And we read another information that is uh, this one. Reality shows aren't always entire honest. They are or they are not. It is true or false. I would say. In this case, they are saying reality shows aren't always entire honest, or they are honest, or they are not complete honest. True or false? The number five. The number five. True. This is true because it is saying here, in this case, Everybody thinks trading spaces is totally real, but trading spaces is totally not real. So in this case, it is not totally or entirely honest. Now, we need to know if the people who appear on the show are actors. And it says, uh, let's see, it is not real. Then we have here, say the woman who appear on the show. If we didn't do something on camera, right? We have to do it again. You become an actor. She's saying that uh, they are becoming actors, but all of the people that appears on the TV show are actors, true or false? And then number four. Number four is false. It's false because in that case, she said, we become actors, but they are not. That is not the, the profession that they have. So in that case, it's false. And the last one, the pits are no longer friends with their neighbors. So let's see, we are going to continue reading this part. And let's see. Here it says, so how happy are homeowners after their remodeling? Generally, the participants are thrilled, but one couple in Portland, Oregon, hated their new room. Their comfortable but cramped family room was transformed into a dark movie theater. But you didn't see that on the show. You didn't see me crying, said Shannon Pitts. They edited it out of the show. It really was an unfunctional room, says Scott Pitts. All you could do was watch TV. So they found themselves remodeling their own space again. But even though Shannon and Scott didn't like the way their family room turned out, they still be on the show again. Why? They love redecorating their neighbor's space. So the thing is, the Pitts are no longer friends with their neighbors. True, false, or not given? Not, not, given. not given. Not given. Good. Because in that case, they are talking just that they are upset about the changes of the house, but it is not talking about um, if they are or not friends with the neighbors. So let's make the check-in of this. So in this case, we have all of the sentence correct. So in that case, you can complete your section with this exercise. So
we're going to take this out because we are going to see the the intro video for the section number two in this case and we are going to uh, listen the information that they have on the intro video remember that the intro videos are kind of longer because they have like five or six minutes so we are going to listen carefully the information that they are um, giving to us and we need to, to find some ideas about uh, the things that we are going to learn in this uh, section number two and also remember that you need to uh, have complete your section number one and section number two and i think you need to to have done your two sections uh, for tomorrow i guess because it's the end of the of the week so you need to work on the on the activity that you have on the platform so remember that you need to do it uh, every week you need to complete uh, the sections in every week so we're going to see the intro video about section number two so let's pay attention to this one Again, we recommend for you to watch the following video and pay attention to it because you will listen to all the topics we'll study in this section. Remember, you may watch the video as many times as you need to. Sit back and relax. One of the most remote nations on earth threatened by rising water levels has today experienced the damaging impact of what's known as a king tide. Tuvalu is a small group of islands 10,000 miles and 11 time zones away in the South Pacific. Islanders fear that the area could disappear within 50 years if action isn't taken over climate change. Well, our environment correspondent, David Shukman, has travelled to the islands and we can join David there now. Hugh, thank you. It's a stormy time here in the heat of the South Pacific, just the combination of high tides and strong winds that people dread because Tuvalu is so low in the water it really does run the risk of becoming the first country to fall victim to the way our climate is now changing. Incredibly beautiful but incredibly vulnerable. The fragile strips of green that make up this country only just break the surface of the ocean. But for how much longer? The mighty waves of the Pacific pound the shoreline during what's called a king tide, the highest tides of the year, and the effects can be devastating. This is the island's main road. Yeah, I mean, we've never seen this in the past, uh, water coming all the way up to this far, and our house is just up behind us. But the water also surges up from underground through the coral the islands are built on. In the space of an hour, the lowest areas are all flooded. Everyone feels the impact. This priest steps carefully through the waters on his way to conduct a funeral. The higher the king tides get, the harder it is to keep things going here. So can you grow anything here? No. Because it's too salty? Yeah, too salty. Okay. The seawater is poisoning the soil and people are nervous. It makes me feel scary. So what will happen to us in 10 years time? This isn't like other floods that I've covered with a single catastrophic event. Instead, it's a creeping process with this seawater flowing up into the heart of these islands and slowly, but effectively, killing them off. The water bubbles up in tiny streams and everywhere you look, it just lies on the surface. And the problem is getting worse. At the harbour, the rising swell is monitored by an Australian system. The measurements go back 15 years. And at the local Met office, they say the king tides are getting higher, a trend forecast to continue. In prediction, the next five to 10 years, the king tide is getting worse and it getting higher than normal, then most of the coastal areas would be washed out. 
The implications are alarming. A typical high tide reaches about two and a half meters. A king tide like now can be more than three. The UN climate panel forecasts a rise of another half meter when the highest point is only about four and a half meters. Now for Tuvalu, each scenario would cost precious land. Only a small rise would see parts of the island go under, perhaps even the runway, a lifeline to the outside world. How long have you got? Not more than 50 years. In fact, some of the islands have already disappeared. Please help us. You cause climate change. You know, the pool of the pays principle must apply. You must give, set up a global fund to which these islands can come and tap into to build their resilience, to build their capacity, their education, technology, and all that, and restore what the damage has been done. People here say there must be a technological fix if a rich country like Dubai can build entirely new islands, especially since these are so narrow, you can cross from one side to the other in a few short paces. The problem, they're founded on coral, which is porous. Saving these islands will cost a fortune. For the children of Tuvalu, the floods are fun. But for them to lead their lives on these islands will require massive international support. And with just 11,000 people here, will the outside world think it's worth it? Now, of course, Tuvalu does get some aid, but not nearly enough to keep the rising sea at bay. So the international community faces very soon a difficult choice of whether to draw a line between those who get saved and those who don't. And in the meantime, people here are getting ready for another king tide. It's right now it's low. It's due to get very high in about eight hours time. Back to you in the studio. David, thank you very much. David Chukman there, our environment correspondent uh, in Tuvalu. Okay, there we have our intro video uh, talking about climate change and we also uh, can hear that they are talking about the problems that the island have. Um, and in that case, we can also notice that um, they have a different kind of pronunciation because in that case, they are not like talking about the a common pronunciation that we know, uh, that is the, the English of US. In this case, it's a different pronunciation. And sometimes we can find them um, kind of confusing, but you know that they are talking about something related to the climate change, um, something about uh, the uh, problem with the with the water in that case, because they are having some troubles with salty water and they are like having no hope about the situation that they are living in the island. But that is just the intro video for the section number two. Remember that when we are ending the sections, we can go to the video again and listen the the video the audio and the ideas that we have um, in those intro videos so in this case we end the section number one so you can uh, listen the conversation that you um listen it on the intro video in the section number one and you are going to find the elements that you have studied in these past two days so in this case, when we finish uh, section number two, you can uh, go back and listen again the intro video of the section number two. But now we're going to um, begin with the information, the structures and um, this grammatical topic. So we are going to begin with uh, this part and we are going to see First, the explanation that we have in the section number two, um, because we have this following objective here, that it says by the end of this class, that you will be able to describe causes with by, because of, through, and as a result of. 
you will do so by using present continuous passive and the present perfect passive. For the first part, we are going to divide this topic in three different parts. For the first part, you are going to listen the explanation that we have on the platform. And then I will explain uh, the present continuous passive and the present perfect passive. So we are going to listen three different explanations in this case, because we are going to divide those, uh, in that case, that topic in three different parts, because we need to, to know all the information that we have about those topics. And then we are going to talk about the reduction. Or uh, in, in this case, we are going to say the reduce auxiliary verbs. So we are going to listen the first part that is in, uh, on the platform. And then I'm going to explain to you the other two structures. And I was saying that in this case is a kind of long um, topic because we are going to, to learn something new. So in this case, we're going to talk about a passive with preposition. That is the video that you have on section number two. And it is on a part 2.1 and the video is called passive with prepositions. So we're going to listen the explanation and then we're going to continue with the other parts of the explanation. Hi, after you listen to the audio program and watch the video with the explanation, we are sure you will understand how to describe causes using by, because of, due to, as a result of, and through. Stay with us. Passive with prepositions. Present continuous passive. The air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. City streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Present perfect passive. The roadways have been jammed because of people's dependence on cars. Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. The homeless have been displaced due to overcrowding in city shelters. Before we go deep into the topic of passive with prepositions, I will divide the topic in two parts to make it easier for you to understand. Number one, present continuous passive. Number two, present perfect passive. I will begin now with number one. Let me show you how to form the present continuous passive. Subject plus is or are being plus past participle. What does the present continuous passive do? It describes an action that is in progress right now. For example, we may say, too many trees are being cut down right now, these days, or water is being contaminated. Ready for number two? Present perfect passive. This is how to form this tense. Subject plus has or have, been plus past participle. We use present perfect passive to describe something that started before the present. The exact time isn't important. For example, too many trees have been cut down recently or in the last years. In either case, we will add a preposition right after the past participle. We may add by, because of, as a result of, due to, through. Let's then add a preposition to our last example. Too many trees have been cut down because of overbuilding. Note, these prepositions have similar meaning. Remember we have studied passive voice before? So let's make a quick review on the active and passive sentences. Active voice. Air pollution is threatening the health of people. Air pollution is the cause. Is threatening is the verb. The health of people is the object. 
Number one is air pollution and health of people is number two. So what we do now is exchange one and two, the object and the cause. Then write a preposition, the health of people by air pollution. Notice we left a blank space on the verb. That's because we need to identify the original tense. In this case, it's present continuous. And write the verb in that tense. For example, is or are being. Then take the original verb, example, threatened, and make it past participle of it. We will be left out with is or are being plus threatened. We want you to do the next exercise. Rewrite the following sentence. Okay, there we have the topic in this case. You know that we are talking about um, the, uh, in this case, the, the causes, we are talking about causes, but in this case, we are going to use the following words. We are using by, because of, um, through and as a result of. So in this case is when we are using the passive because we are talking about the problem and also we are going to talk about like the cause and effect of that situation. And in that case, when we are using the uh, prepositions is because you are going to explain or give a more detailed idea about the things that are happening. So in that case, you have the examples there on the video. Now we are going to begin with the explanation of the present continuous and the present uh, perfect passive. Because in that case, you have some information on the video in which we are talking about those structures. Now I'm going to talk about more about those structures. And you know that uh, we have the active and passive voices. And also, you know that in that case, when you are as, uh, using the passive, you are given the the importance to the object of the sentence. In that case, it is not the subject, it is the object. And that's why we use the passive. But in this case, we are going to see uh, more examples and more information about uh, those uh, structures. We are going to begin with present perfect passive. So let's begin with this one. The image that we have there is not the beginning, and this is part of the topic, so I'm going to move it. So in this case, we have the present perfect uh, tense. We can say the present perfect tense. Let me see, no, this one. The present continuous passive is the first one that we have here. We are going to see the image in a moment because we are going to uh, have more explanation and then you are going to see the image is almost the same with the with the video in which you are seeing the changes that we are making with the active and passive sentences. So in this case, present continuous passive is used to talk about some ongoing actions performed at the moment of speaking or around it. So in this case, we are going to use this structure when we are talking about an action that is happening like in this moment or around this moment when we are talking. So we are going to write some specifications. Here we have is used to talk about ongoing actions or around it. And we have some examples. Let's see the examples. 
Number one, Nick's order is being delivered to the nearest store. Nick's order is being delivered to the nearest store. In this case, we if, if we're talking about the active sentence, uh, we can say that Nick is the subject of the sentence, but in this case, the object that is Nick's order is the uh, protagonist of our sentence here. Nick's order is being delivered. So in this case, it's being is part of the structure that we are using for the present continuous passive. Then we have another one and it says, our dinner is being cooked as we speak. Our dinner is being cooked as we speak. Then we have here this structure. And we have number three. Visitors are being checked in at the hotel. Visitors are being checked in at the hotel. So here we have the structure. And you see the structure or you saw the structure on the video, but we're going to write the structure again. And in this case, when we have um, an active voice, that is the most common uh, voice that we use in English, we have a subject plus am is are plus ing verb. That is the structure that we can use for the active voice. So in this case, I'm going to write the active and the passive because we are going to see the difference between them. So in the active voice, we have the subject plus is, I mean am, um, is, in R plus the ing verb. But in a passive, in this case, in the present continuous passive, we have the following structure. If we have in this case, you know that the beginning of this uh, sentence is the object. So in that case, you know that you are going to change the object at the beginning. And maybe in some cases, you are going to change the subject at the end. But um, in some passive sentence, it is not necessary to write uh, the uh, subject. So in this case, you know that you have the object at the beginning, then you have um is or plus being plus past participle. And then you have the last part of the sentence. So now we can see the image that I have for you because in that case, we have the two different voices that we have on, uh, in this case, when we are uh, working with these kind of um, structures. So we have the table of English tenses in passive voice, and we have here the active and the passive, and we can see through the lines in which cases or in which spaces are the words depending on the voice that we have. 
In the active voice, we have the subject, am um, is an R plus a verb with ing plus O. In that case, it's like the object. But when we are writing the passive, we change the object at the beginning of the sentence. And in that case, you have the same a structure, but you are going to see the difference because in that case, in the passive, the subject is not the same, is the object. That's why we have that line to the subject because it's representing the object of the sentence. Then the subject go to the end of the sentence and the verb in ing, it's going to have like a past participle of the verb. Así que en esta imagen nosotros tenemos lo que es el cambio que se le da a las estructuras. Tenemos el activo donde vemos que el sujeto, porque estamos utilizando ambas eh, estructuras y las estamos dejando de la misma manera para que ustedes vean las diferencias. En el activo el sujeto pues, está al principio, pero en el pasivo si se fijan dónde está la línea está hasta el final donde está el objeto. Y el objeto que estaba al final pasa al principio y el verbo en ING ya no es verbo en ING en este caso, porque ya tenemos el being, sino que en este caso vamos a utilizar el past participle of the verb. So, we have three changes in that structure for the passive. And we have the example. He is writing a novel at the moment. He is writing a novel at the moment. In that case, we can say that the subject is he. He is the subject and the novel is the object of the sentence. But when we are changing to passive, we change the object that is the novel and it is at the beginning. And we say a novel is being written by who? By him. But in that case, it is not relevant to add the subject of the sentence. So a novel is being written at the moment. And in some case, if you can add the subject, that is a, another option, but it is not necessary to add the subject in the passive uh, sentences. Then, We have uh, some, uh, we have more examples, but in this case, we're going to divide them in a singular and in plural. For singular sentences, we have the following examples. Let's see. Number one, I am being tough. Then you are being and in this case, he, she, and it. In plural, we have, we are being, you are being, and they are. And if you are uh, asking by who, maybe by a teacher, maybe by him, by she, by, by her, I mean, so in that case, we are not adding the subject. And we have another one, but this is complete sentence. My car is at the garage, it, it is being repaired. My car is at the garage.
it is being repaired. Then a letter is being written by her. In this case, we're adding the, the subject at the end of the sentence. Now, when we need to use the present continuous passive, and in this case, we use the present continuous passive for actions happening right now or in progress at the moment of speaking. When we want to focus attention on the person or thing affected by the action. When the subject is unknown, unclear, or irrelevant. So in that case, that's why we are not like focusing on the subject because in some cases we don't know who is the subject that is doing the action. It is unclear of who is performing the action or in some cases it is not relevant because we are focusing on the object. Then we have also a negative form of the present continuous passive. And it says that to make a negative form of present continuous passive, we are going to add not. Between um, is are and being. So in the case, it's, it's really easy to make a negative sentence. It's like making positive, uh, simple present uh, statement. In this case, you're just going to add not. So let's see an example. In this case, we have the work is not being performed at the moment because the customer did not pay in time. And the second one, the classrooms aren't being clean now. The classrooms aren't being clean now. So in that case, you have a very, very easy way to create the negative form. And also we have questions, but in this case, um, you are going to use WH words or you are going to use the verb to be at the beginning, then the subject, then being plus past participle. And that is the information that we have for the present continuous uh, passive. And now, because we have like five minutes, we are going to see the other structure that is the present perfect passive. Remember that you have all the information on the document, so don't worry for that. So in this case, we have the present perfect passive that a, an English perform that has the present tense, perfect aspect and passive voice. And in the passive, a subject of the sentence is not the doer. So in that case, it is not uh, the person that is performing the action. It is acted upon and we need to see, or we need to focus our attention on what or who received an action. In this case, the object. So we are going to focus on the object. We use the present perfect passive with the same meaning as present perfect in the active voice. 
except for the fact that present perfect passive may focus on the effect, that is, the object of the sentence, rather than the door, in this case, is the subject of an action. So in this structure, we are going to focus on the object in the effect of the sentence. And in this image, we can see here, let's move to this one here. In this one, you can see the word order change in the passive voice. The subject and the object of the sentence change places. It's the same with the other one because the, the main thing with the passive is to change the object at the beginning of the sentence and the subject at the end because you are need uh, or you are focusing on the object. So in this case, we have the, um, the structure that is the subject has had the B3 ED at the end plus the object. And then you have the, the object has had been B3 by plus the subject. He had just finished a novel. In this case, you're going to use the verb with the ed ending. He has just finished a novel. A novel had just been finished by him. So in that case, you are going to use the verbs um, ending with ed in the case that they are simple. The main difference, it says that the main difference um, between the present perfect active and the present perfect passive is terms of grammar and semantics. And that the present perfect passive allows for an object of an active sentence to move into the subject position of a passive sentence. When uh, we use the present perfect, the passive form for all the same reasons, we use it in the active form. And we are going to talk about one, experiences and achievements, two, change over time, three, incomplete action with expected ends, four, continuous action started in the past, five, past action will result in present, and six, multiple action at different times. So in this case, they have different uses and we have six different uses. I will add that information at the end of this document because it is necessary that we have this information. So for the present perfect um, passive, we have six different usage. So that is not just for one thing. We have uh, six different things. In general, we use passive voice in, instead of act, uh, active voice when the subject is unknown. Again, we are talking about that we don't know who is the subject. We don't know who or what is the subject. We want to emphasize the subject. We are unclear or vague about the subject or the subject is irrelevant. Um, to talk about general truths uh, in informal writing, such as scientific reports, like the things that we were um, seen in the video because we are talking about a uh, something scientific so in that case we are going to use this structure but now i have the the schedule for the other group so we are going to end this session and we are going to see each other tomorrow in session number four so have a really good night and see you tomorrow yeah. thank you very much Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night everybody. See you tomorrow, everyone. Thank you, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow. Happy night.